Hello there. In this video, we're going to explain how the Frank Hertz experiment was conducted in 1914, based on the atomic model uh, developed by Niels Bohr the, the year before. The main objective of this experiment was to prove the discretization of electronic energy levels in atoms, since there was an upcoming interest in the study of discretization in energy levels in photons, caused by the results obtained in the ultraviolet catastrophe. The first justifications for Bohr's model were discovered based on the discrete absorption and emission of light of the atoms. They were criticized because it could be due to the quantization of energy in photons and not the electronic levels of atoms. The Frank Hertz experiment doesn't rely on light and is considered to be the first irrefutable proof of discretization of the electronic levels. Indeed, this experiment starts out with the hypothesis that the energy levels are discrete and we can measure the energy gap between the fundamental state and the first excited state. To make this possible, it's necessary for a population of atoms of the same element uh, to collide with a with an electron phase. So, the energy loss in electrons will be able to show the discrete way in which energy is gained by atoms. If the energy of the electron is at least equal to the corresponding to the first excited state, then the decay experimented should match with this one. Otherwise, there should not be any energy transference at all. Now, the material necessary to conduct this experiment will be mentioned. First of all, two tubes, one which contains neon and the other one will contain mercury, both of them with an internal heater. Then, we have a controlled unity. This device is responsible for the correct functioning of the currents and voltages used in this montage. Uh, the next device will be the analog oscilloscope, which gives us a qualitative and quantitative representation of the first excited state. And finally, we have the digital multimeter. To be able to observe the continuous curve of the current in front of the voltage at the oscilloscope, it's needed to introduce a variable ramp of voltage from zero. Otherwise, the oscilloscope is not able to interpret a constant signal. This device also incorporates a commutator, which enables the possibility of introducing a variable potential or a constant potential. The intensity exiting just after the collector is very weak, so it's needed a BNC wire to mitigate external noises. Finally, we should explain how are the Frank Hertz tubes that we are using. The one containing mercury is built within a furnace to be able to increase the temperature and optimize the vapor pressure inside the tube. On the other hand, the one containing neon can be treated at ambient temperature and it incorporates a fourth electrode just under the cathode, so it's able to concentrate the electron phase emitted. But what about the procedure? To be able to set up the experiment, a cathode ray tube with a triad that contains steam set to a low pressure is used. The electrons emitted by the cathode are accelerated toward the anode, whose form is a grid. Behind the grid, there is the third electrode, which is a collector surface with the function of measuring the cathode's intensity. The electron's energy will be given by this measure. In the path between the anode and cathode, the electrons produce collisions with the steam's atoms. If the anode's potential grows from zero, the intensity measured by the collector grows as well until the electron's energy reaches first excited state energy. After that, a drastic decay in intensity is observed due to the excitation of the atoms in the steam. In fact, if the potential is continually augmented, the same exact behavior is observed for values proportional to the first excited state uh, by a factor 2 or 3. Because once we determine the energy levels, every electron is going to be able to excite multiple atoms at the same time. In this experiment, we will examine the transitions in mercury uh, between orbital cis s and cis p and neon, whose transitions are observed between 2p and 3p, 3s and 3d orbitals, because they have values of energy very close to each other. Oh, in the moment of conducting the experiment, energy transitions will be exchanged, so the definition attained in current spikes for neon may be a bit poor. Once we have a good representation of the energy levels on the oscilloscope, first of all, an increase of the current string. After that, we can see a drastic decay due to the excitation of the atoms in the vapor. With the potential difference between the minimums observed, we can obtain the energy corresponding to the first excited state. The relationship between the energy and the potential is given by this theoretic equation. 
As we can see, there are different minimums. This is only caused by the fact that an electron can excite two atoms at the same time, or three or more. As you can see, the main hypothesis of the experiment were confirmed. The current minimum reflects the energy jumps in the atoms, and the energy values are given by the potential gap shown in the figure. Over time, these values were sustained by the rise of the quantum mechanics. And no wonder why James Frank and Gustav Ludwig Hertz were awarded with a Nobel Prize in 1925.